Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdale here again. In this presentation, I'm going to continue my live streams on mathematics. And in particular, I'm going to show you uh, the limits of a couple of important sequences. Okay, so I'm going to calculate a few limits of some sequences and show you where they're useful. So let me share my screen with you and uh, we can get started. Okay, so this is the first limit we're going to look at, and this is the second limit. Now, here we're talking about sequences. So n is um, uh, a natural number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. Okay, now <clears throat> these kinds of um, uh, functions here that, that have these, uh, the domain is like the, the set of natural numbers, are called sequences. And they are really, really, really important in all sorts of modeling where the, the um, phenomena is changing uh, in discrete time, for example, or sequences can be used for uh, approximating solutions to problems in like an iterative uh, process. But the um, idea of this video is to compute this limit and then use that to compute this limit. And these, these limits are kind of handy. Okay, so let's look at the first limit. Okay, by LN, I mean, I mean natural logarithm, right? Now, this looks crazy. Why would you want to compute a limit like that? Well, I'm glad you asked. And the answer is kind of hidden in the second part of the question. Compute this, hence, with this information, compute this limit here, and this is the nth root of n. So let's just do this first. Okay, so let's just naively put a limit in up the top and a limit in down the bottom as n approaches positive infinity, and you get this, I'm going to put this in inverted commas, you get log n goes to infinity as n goes to infinity, and n goes to infinity as n goes to infinity. So you get this indeterminate form, infinity over infinity. Now, that should flag uh, an idea called Le Hopital's rule. Okay? Now, yes, we're dealing with sequences here, but if we transfer our log n over n to a function, say log x over x, where x is real and positive, we can then apply Le Hopital's rule, which involves calculus and differentiation. So let me show you. All right, we have an indeterminate form here. And we're going to use that to apply an idea called La Hopital's rule. Okay, so to do that, and I'm just going to be a little bit um, careful here. I'm going to let f of x be the function associated with this, where x is real and positive. Okay? All right, so this is then an indeterminate form as x goes to infinity. And if we can compute the limit of this function as x goes to infinity, then we can get the limit of this sequence, okay? So we can use function methods to get the limits of sequences. All right. So let's take the limit here. Of this. Okay. And Le Hopital's rule says that as long as the limits exist. You can take the derivative of the denominator and the derivative of the numerator separately and then retake the limit. So let me just write that down. Okay. So the derivative of log of x with respect to x is 1 on x and the derivative with respect of x with respect to x is just 1. So so I'll get the following 1 on x all over 1. So what is this limit here? Well, obviously the bottom is just 1. Limit of the top is 0. 
So the limit of this function here is x goes to positive infinity is zero. This means that this the limit of this sequence must also be zero as n goes to infinity. So let's write that down. Okay, so we're pretty happy about that. So this is the first important idea with the limits of sequences. You can use the ideas of limits of functions to compute the limit of a sequence. And if you can use the, the ideas for limits of functions, then you can use all the rules associated with them, like Le Hopital rule the squeeze, pinching, or sandwich theorem, and, and, and so on, okay? So, um, so this is very important. Let's have a look at the second part of the question. Okay, so compute this limit. We got that limit to be zero. Hence, compute this limit. So why would we want to know this limit? So we can use it, so we can do something with it to get this limit, okay? The nth root of n. So let's, let's have a look at this, all right? So I'll take a new page for that. So let's call this part two. So let's take the limit of the nth root as n. So as n gets large and positive, what happens to this? Well, let's write it in the following way. Just a little bit of manipulation. The nth root can be written as power 1 on n. Now, what I can do here is use e to the natural log of this whole thing because we know that the exponential and the logarithm are um, inverses. They're opposites of each other. So if I take e to the log of all of this, I haven't changed it at all. So let me just show you what I mean. There's the logarithm. I get the following. Now, this is because e and log are inverses and they cancel each other out and you'll just be left with n to the 1 on n. So I haven't changed it at all. So how does that help us? It looks like we've made things more difficult, but actually we've made it simpler because what we can do now is use basic log laws and we're going to use part 1, which had a, a limit of a logarithm in it. Okay, let me show you. Okay, so what we can do down here is use log laws. This one on n can come to the front. So I'm going to get e to the one on n log n. And this, this exponent, is the same thing that we calculated up here. So we want to calculate this, and I can move that limit up to the exponent, right? So the limit of the exponent is zero from part one. So the limit has been taken up there, and it's e to the zero from part one. And e to the zero is just one. Okay. So we're pretty happy. First of all, we were given this, uh, given the task of computing this limit. It was indeterminate form. We switched to a function and applied the Hopital's rule. Because, we, we, you know, strictly speaking, you can't differentiate this if it's only uh, n's 1, 2, 3, okay? It's not like a differentiable function. We, we got the limit to be 0, okay? Okay, so I'm very happy about that. Then we apply that limit to compute this limit here by just using some manipulation techniques. We wrote uh, this in this form and then e to the natural log of this and then used the log laws which gave us something like the first part. And we, so we got one. Okay. Well. That's my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said before, uh, at the beginning of this presentation, sequences are awesome because they help us in modeling uh, discrete time phenomena. 
and they also help us to approximate solutions, say numerically, to equations. If you have any suggestions, any comments, I always love reading your comments. Post them in the comment section. Hope you can join me again for more live stream maths. See you later, everyone. Bye.